And same to you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, let me do this. Um, let me open with a word of prayer, of course, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, and we praise you. Oh, the beauty of this day. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, uh, you have said when you created, and it is good. Uh, without a doubt, uh, absolutely stunning. We thank you for the birds that are back. Uh, the turkeys doing their crazy strutting out there, which is hilarious and entertaining, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the gorgeous, gorgeous weather. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for that. We know that that pleased number of times this, week's Lord, this week, Lord, <clears throat> to prepare all of our hearts, Lord, to hear your word. Uh, Heavenly Father, um, yeah, so many things trying to steal that from us. So many things trying to steal that from us, Lord. So, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, would you please protect these sweet people here right now? Lord, would you please, I'm begging, please protect them from all the stuff out there that's trying to steal from them, from hearing what you want as our shepherd, our Heavenly Father, to communicate to us today. So, Heavenly Father, would you empower us to hear um, and how, help empower us not just to hear, but for the, the exposure from your word here, Lord, uh, to uh, make a change in our life, to fall that much more in love with you, Lord. Would you grant that to us, Lord? The love of you, love of your word, the love of your son, the love of your Holy Spirit, would you please grant that? I'm begging again. And Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, uh, would you please help me uh, Rob McDowell, just to step out of the way, would you please do that, Lord? Uh, just use me, uh, Heavenly Father, use me in my frailties. Uh, Lord, I am humbled. This is your word. These are your people. And you've asked me to represent you, Lord. So, Lord, I need your empowerment. Would you please do that, Lord? In your son's sweet name, amen. amen. Okay, very good. Uh, what I want to do, I always love throwing a title on there. Always love throwing a title on there for communication purposes. <clears throat> and so the title would be this. Jesus, our Savior of quality and integrity. Jesus, our Savior of quality and integrity. Eventually, I'll be with Matthew 11.6. Uh, I'll preach one out of, from one verse today, uh, Matthew uh, maybe I said this before sometime, but when I was a kid growing up, uh, I would marvel with complete um, confusion how the pastor in the pulpit could preach so long on such little out of the scripture. Um, okay, I get it. I've, uh, I now understand that. Um, so anyway, yeah, Matthew eleven six. And, you know, it's one of the, and I've said this, uh, the Lord keeps growing me in this understanding of the depth of appreciating who God our Father is, uh, who God our Savior is, who God the Holy Spirit is. And we also have the privilege of having the, His Word. Um, you know, when you, oh, we've been Christians for a, a long time, how many years? And it's so easy for us to have a sense of uh, taking uh, for granted. You know, we've had this for years. I don't know how many Bibles I, I have at home. Do I have 50? I may have 50. Maybe I have more than 50 Bibles at home. And I have Bibles in both uh, my rig and Cindy's rig that we hand out to people when the Lord gives those opportunities. Uh, if you want to know what kind of Bibles those are, <clears throat> uh, they'll holler at me. I'll show you one. I'll even give you one. Um, and uh, uh, we have those for giving uh, their evangelistic Bibles, uh, for giving uh, away to people. And so <clears throat> this wonderful con God has sought to it in his providence to save you, to get you eternal life, and you have his holy, we have his holy word. We have, do we, we don't. And uh, the appreciation we should have for that is, the, the appreciation that we should have for that um, 
would mandate for us to give God back our entire life. And even that is not sufficient appreciation for what we have with God. You know, it's, it's only just going to get better for us. It's only just going to, oh, there goes the Jesus bumps. It's only going to get better. You know, when we sang, oh, those beautiful songs. Oh, man, it was just like, oh, Lord, let us go. Call us. Call us. Okay? Call us. And imagine what that's going to be like when we get to heaven. Oh, and all of us sing, sing, sing <laughs> Jesus and sing to Jesus. Oh, oh I'm getting Holy Spirit bumps and going down my back. Well, we can talk about that afterwards, okay? And so this, we fall, and I beg the Lord for myself. Lord, help me appreciate. Lord, help me to appreciate. Grow me. I beg the Lord this, even this week. This is like a theme of my life for the last, I don't know, a couple of years or something. Um, but I beg the Lord, Lord, help me to grow in this appreciation of who you are. Yes. Help me to grow in your appreciation of who Jesus is, the Holy Spirit is, and his word. We have his word. The, God is the creator of the universe. Jesus is the creator. He spoke. It came into being. And now... We are his sheep, his children. That's totally mind-boggling to me. Uh, the title again, Jesus, our Savior of quality and integrity. Okay, Matthew eleven six. 6. Um, I'll, I'll quote it here right now. Um, so out of the NIV, I'll quote it out of the NIV, and then later, here in a, a minute or two, <clears throat> I'll quote it out of uh, other versions as well. And this is actually uh, referred to as the forgotten beatitude. Uh, there's many that it will, a number anyway, of uh, Christians, uh, pastors in the past that uh, call this the forgotten beatitude. You know, we have the beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, blessed are the poor in spirit, uh, blessed are the pure in heart, etc., etc., etc. And so here we have Matthew chapter 11, verse 6, another beatitude. And it doesn't get a lot of press. It does not get a lot of press. But this beatitude has been speaking to me. I had something else prepared for this morning. And I agonized in prayer. I even asked my wife. I said, honey, what? And I came to the conclusion, if I heard him right, since a nudge, Rob, go with the beatitude. So Matthew eleven six states this. Jesus is speaking. He says, blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. Interesting. So what does that mean? Great question. Let me quote it again from the NIV. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. This is Jesus speaking. Okay. Say our Savior of quality and integrity. <clears throat> Let me read you. This was a, uh, a recent occurrence for me, like about 10 days ago or so. And I was on Facebook. <clears throat> I don't get on there a whole lot. <laughs> That's why I was looking at my wife. <clears throat> yeah, no, I've, uh, um, anyway. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> right, yeah. Well, another time we'll talk about that. <laughs> but uh, I may spend a little more time on there than what I should. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm not the only one. Okay, I'm coming clean with that. So anyway, <clears throat> I was on Facebook, and on Messenger, beep, <clears throat> this came up. And it was from a, a dear, sweet widow lady. You guys would love Maxine. You would adopt Maxine. <laughs> Uh, she, if you get in your boat and go 60 miles, uh, it's a bit of an estimate, go 60 miles, you'll be at Maxine's. Oh, you have to walk up the hill, but uh, that's where Maxine lives, about 60 miles down the river. I had the honor, she's an elderly, elderly lady, I had the honor of burying her husband here a few years back. But again, she's a sweetie, you would adopt her in, in a heartbeat. So anyway, beep. Uh, oh, on Messenger. Oh, Maxine wants to say something on Mex Messenger. So I, I hit it up, 
And uh, so here's what it says. I'll read to you the conversation that I had with Maxine. Okay, first of all, it says, hello, Robert. Then, real soon after that, another little post on uh, Messenger. Hope everything is well with you and your family. Then, I didn't answer right away, because I'm going, mm. uh, pretty soon, uh, that this person, Maxine, uh, puts two question marks. In other words, hey, where are you? <clears throat> and so, I thought, uh, this is not sounding like sweet little Christian Maxine. Let's do a little bit of dialogue. <laughs> I know when Maxine's birthday is, and Maxine's birthday is about as far away uh, as you can get coming or going. It's like uh, November or something. So I asked this question of Maxine. I said, hey, I'm doing all right. How are you? Did you just have a birthday? So I just lobbed that in there. Okay, let's see how that responds. So interesting. Um, uh, the person, Maxine, did not answer that question. <laughs> so it went right away to this. Good to hear from you. I am doing wonderfully great as well. I have been trying to reach you here because I saw your name on the DHHS list. Have you heard of them yet? So I replied, no, never heard of it. What is it? Okay, come to Robert. <laughs> come to Robert for a <laughs> Okay, what and how dare this person pose as Maxine? She's right. Yeah, she's one of those ladies who go, oh, that's it. Do you want me to break his kneecaps? <clears throat> so uh, anyway, I said again, no, never heard of it. What is it? Tell me. Um, so interesting. Okay, this person explains it. It's a Department of Health and Human Service that helps. Interesting. You know, a lot of times there's like one specific people group that some of these genuine programs help. Now, as I go through... Everybody that this helps, um, see if it includes you. See if it includes every person on the globe, okay? Uh, that helps workers. This person goes, hearing, deaf, old, young, students, widowed, retired, people with disabilities to be benefit them financially to maintain the standard of living. Did you receive any money yet? Hmm, okay, come to Papa, come to Papa. <clears throat> so I replied, hey, is it worth my time? How much can I get? And uh, O.M., and take the norm, name of the Lord in vain, uh, Maxine, I got $200,000 cash. But I saw your name entitled to the cash bonus when mine was delivered to my store, doorstep. You have to contact the, here we go, okay, now they're going to me, come to me. Uh, you have to contact the, excuse me, agent for more inquiry. Do you know how to do that? Me, I replied, I have no idea. In other words, tell me, tell me, you've got my curiosity up. So they post this Facebook site, uh, and then this person, uh, posts again on this. Just click on the link page and it will direct you to their official Facebook link page. You left him a message and left, let him know you just heard about the new DHHS program from me and you are ready to apply for yours too. Okay, very compassionate of the guy. Then he posts again, a couple minutes, something later. Try to open the link by clicking on it and message him that a friend told you about the grant and you are here to apply and know if you are eligible for it. I thought, okay, it's time to lower the boom. So uh, I pull out God's word. Um, so I don't usually tough love people this way, so please don't be afraid of me. When it comes to missionaries and pastors, I'm the cute and fuzzy kind, okay? <laughs> I really am. And you know my wife is. So I quoted this, typed it in to send to him. I said, 
Revelation 21.8, God says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Yes. Did I, a little, uh, little, sermon, little sermon on here. I, God says when liars die, they go to an eternity in fiery hell. You are a liar. If you die today, you will immediately be in hell. And there you will suffer for all eternity. Now, I'm not being a brat. I, I'm, in, I'm entertained a bit, of course. So, And there you will uh, suffer for all eternity. Jesus can save you. If you want to know more, ask me. I know you aren't Maxine. You are lying. When you die, you will go to hell. He responds. <laughs> And to hear his response, you'll have to wait to hear me next month when I preach here. So I'm messing with you. Okay. Yeah, I saw the looks in your faces like, that's it, preacher boy. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, so again, my last words were, you are lying. When you will die, you will go to hell. Do you want to know how he responded? Oh, this is so enjoyable. This is so not Maxine. Okay. It's so... <laughs> I would love to show her this. <clears throat> uh, this is so not Maxine. So he replies, you are mad. Your father must be stupid. Idiot, you must be crazy. I thought, oh, score. Yes. <laughs> I had one last response to him. I said this, hell is hot. Life is short. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Very, very entertaining. Oh, hopefully I didn't burn up a lot of my sermon time on that. Uh, anyway, uh, you guys get prank or uh, phone calls from scammers too. Here's advice for you. Okay. Uh, when a scammer calls, this is what we do. This is what I do. My wife does this too. And when it's obviously a scammer that calls, uh, we pick up the phone. And, and what I say is this. Stevens County Sheriff's Department Fraud Division. How may I help you? Click. They're gone. <laughs> so feel free to do, see see how it learn from me, glean from me, <clears throat> and I honestly do that. We both do that. But liars will burn in hell. <laughs> Back to the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough crowd. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know how to justify that right now. I'm going to move back to the sermon. Okay. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, yeah, back to the forgotten beatitude. Uh, Matthew eleven six 6. NIV. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. Fascinating. What, Jesus, are you meaning by this? King James Version states this, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Fascinating. Uh, a version, uh, I don't know what version this is. Uh, blessed is he who keeps from stumbling over me. Hmm, what is going on here? And you guys know I like the Amplified, how it expands and helps us to meditate on the scripture. Here's what the Amplified says. And blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is he who takes no offense at me, Jesus, and finds no cause for stumbling in or through me is, and is not hindered from seeing the truth. <clears throat> Vance Havner, and I'll talk about him in a second here, old preacher, I'll give you a bio in a second. He puts it in his own words. He says this, the Lord knows what he, oh, this is good, I like it, this is a great summation. The Lord knows what he is doing and I will not be offended. The Lord knows what he is doing and I will not be offended. In fact, uh, this is not his sermon, but if you go online, pull up Vance Havner, uh, a great man of God, uh, born in 1901, died in 1986. 
Um, he was from North Carolina, an old Baptist preacher, respected preacher, uh, wrote almost 40 books, and a number of uh, guys have said that he's the most quoted preacher of the 20th century. You might not have known that. In 1960, Vance was near death. I think it was a blood clot. He almost died. He was close. Billy Graham called Vance's wife and said, we had prayer for Vance, and I told my wife that I believe the Lord would let Vance live a while longer to prepare sermons for the rest of us to preach. So that's what Billy thinks of Vance uh, Havner, which they're both having a good time in heaven right now. Uh, let me ask some questions. Get just thinking here, okay? <clears throat> Have you ever been, yeah... Have you ever been surprised with the direction, the journey that the Lord has taken you? Have you ever been surprised with that? Yeah, what? Wait a minute. Uh, right, I was raised on a little farm south of Deer Park. Yeah. And it's like, okay, have you ever been surprised with the journey that the Lord has taken you? Uh, another question. Obvious question. Have you ever had trials in your life? Mm, yeah. Have you ever had, let's, let's continue to dive down into this. Have you ever had absolutely miserable trials in your life? I mean, the, the, we, none of us enjoy the trials, but the absolute grinders that uh, are miserable. Have you had any trials in your life, the miserable trials, the, the ugly ones that last for days? that last for weeks, that last for months, that last yeah. for years, or also that in this life, they're not gonna go away. It's our lot to live until the Lord calls us home. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever been angry with God? This, if you look at Wikipedia, Robert McDowell, Pastor Robert McDowell, this is my bio. I'm not in Wikipedia. I'm messing with you a little bit. But this describes me so much. So, um, have you, at this, have you ever been angry with God? Have, have you ever shook your fist at God? Not all that long ago. Yes, within the last couple of weeks, maybe, yeah. Um, have you ever doubted the goodness of God? Are you now tired of me meddling in your life? <laughs> okay. I have, have you found that the times that you have, uh, that it's extremely difficult, maybe even impossible in our strength, to trust God? Maybe even so also, so much that your faith has been shaken to the core. Have you said to God, why God, why? Welcome to the club. Okay, welcome to the club. So I got six points. Each one takes 20 minutes. So order the pizza. Okay. <clears throat> they don't take, I'm messing with you. Here. You know I love to torment you. Okay. First one. There are six points, but I'll blaze through these prudently here. The surety of trials. Number one, the surety of trials. The surety of it. John 16, so don't be surprised. This is life. John 16, 33, our Savior says this. In this life, you will have troubles. Hmm. God allows. Mind blown? Holy Spirit bones. God allows. God could alleviate trials in our life, and without a doubt, there's like a million trials that he protects us from, Undoubtedly, that's what a shepherd would do. And, uh, but God does allow trials in our life. How's your 2023 this year? We're five months into the year. How's it going? All right, how's it going? I hope it's going well for all of you. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's my hope for you. Very good. Um, yeah, a little bit of history from, you know, um, I had that COVID thing. Everybody's sick and tired of hearing about COVID. Yeah, no, me too. Awful. And so I had, uh, I was in the hospital 44 days, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That was a living 
hell. Uh, the hospital didn't bring it on to me, the, uh, and, uh, but it was going through the illness. Uh, and also the number of months afterwards was also hell for me and for my dear wife, my family, <clears throat> etc. And your prayers, I, I, cannot, I cannot thank you enough for praying for me. And, uh, you know, I may have said this here already, but uh, your prayers have taken me from the point a year ago, January, and if I'm repeating myself, forgive me, um, the hospital had filled out paperwork. Have I said this before? Mm -hmm. uh, the hospital had filled out paperwork. I was so bad that the hospital filled out paperwork to have me placed in a long-term long -term care home. So that's what you prayed me out of. That's where it was. That's where it was. So that's how bad I was. Uh, unable, just totally unable. In fact, uh, Monday night is garbage night. When I take a to the garbage truck comes Tuesday. And if I say something of this nature, uh, Cindy, dear woman, uh, do you mind taking the garbage out and on the way by the kitchen? You might make, mind making me a sandwich. And Cindy pulls out that piece of paper and says, <laughs> yes, uh, Rob, all we got to do is date this thing. <clears throat> so, uh, and she doesn't. But we do have that sheet of paper at home. <clears throat> yes, as part of the testimony. Um, and... <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, the fear is in me, right? I mean, look at my pupils are dilated now, too. And uh, she hit me a couple, three weeks ago. I actually, at that point, confessed to kidnapping the Lindbergh baby. And that was decades before I was even born. But I thought, well, we're going to get this all out on the table. Okay, let's move on. A uh, part of the misery, and this is part of the testimony, part of the misery, misery when I got out of the hospital the third time, uh, Cindy uh, came to me, I'm at home, and I'm still feeling, right, just sick, um, it, agonizing. And so uh, Cindy says, Rob, you probably should know this, that there's an issue about the hospital bill. I'm like, okay, yeah, my attention, what's going on? And unfortunately... Uh, now, this is not a roundhouse way to ask you guys to help out. It's none of that. But this is, right, this is God allowed. This is God allowed. And Cindy and I have worked, we're not extravagant, uh, expended, and we have prayed for decades and worked hard to pay off our loans, and praise the Lord, we were zeroed. It's just like, Score. And so um, Cindy says, oh, we need, to, honey, I need to talk to you about the hospital bill. Um, she says, uh, Robert, we owe six figures. I'm like, what? And um, so what took place on my insurance is there's one or two little bitty cracks in my insurance. And guess what? <laughs> Rob fell in one of those cracks. And... So we owed, wasn't it over $200,000 before, before the discount? So uh, we owed over a oh, fifth of a million bucks on a missionary wage. And um, so the hospital, praise the Lord, Sacred Heart, dropped her down. It was like 135, 136 or something like that. So 135,000 bucks. So the hospital uh, says, uh, Rob, how are you planning on paying for this? <laughs> and it's just like, I went, oh, Lord. Lord, we have worked so hard for decades. And now I got, it's an eighth of a million bucks, 130 grand. I just went, oh, dear Lord. And uh, they were workable. And they said, well, uh, what? And, and so we asked them, and I said, hey, is 250 bucks a month sufficient? And so, um, yeah, so we're paying 250 bucks a month on, at that point, $135,000. We figured out what year we'd had that paid off. It was like 2054, okay? I'm 62. 
Well, I live to 2064. <clears throat> the hospital's gonna take really good care of me because they want me to pay that bill. So I got that going for me. <laughs> um, so that's 30 some years. I, I will be an elderly man. I'm elderly already. <clears throat> so there's that. Now, ironically, oh, I got so many things I wanna say to you guys. Ironically, I have a really good friend and uh, <laughs> who's got money? Yeah, all of a sudden he's a friend. Hey, I'm related. Yeah, <laughs> have a really good friend, and I've known him over uh, fifty plus years. And we go fishing uh, all the. You know, I did the wedding with him and his wife, and etc. All of it. I uh, love him. I uh, really do. So uh, he's retired. He's my age. He retired a couple years ago from UPS. He gets bored. He lives uh, west of Spokane. He gets bored. He tells his wife, he says, honey, I'm bored. Let's go to the uh, Coeur d'Alene Casino. So he goes to the Coeur d'Alene Casino. He drops a dollar in the one-armed bandit. And guess what? A hundred and thirteen thousand dollars. Nice. <laughs> now this is not a prescription for you guys to all run to the casino and start dropping coin in there. That's a bad investment. Uh, what's it say? Gambling. Here's a great cliche. Gambling. Gambling is a tax. Uh, hold on here. On stupidity. Uh, on stupidity. <laughs> on, on, yeah. Uh, gambling is a tax. Is a tax upon ignorant people. And so, anyway, so I've been praying for Brian to get saved for 50 years. Uh, so here's me, a Christian, serving Jesus. I'm now 135 G's in the hole. Brian, 113. Positive. Yeah, interesting. We were coming back from visiting our son Jared down at uh, uh, Pullman a year ago. And we decided to come up. We had a camp board meeting that next Saturday, the next day, mm -hmm. and so we, we drove up Highway 95, and there was the Coeur d'Alene Casino, and it was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe just one dollar, <laughs> maybe just one little bitty dollar, and and it was basically immediately just like, you know, Rob, a, a conviction from the Holy Spirit that would hurt my feelings for you to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, there goes the Jesus bumps. That would hurt my feelings. Rob, you're looking for something else to provide for you. Again, uh, the verse 11, 6, Matthew. Blessed is a man who does not fall away on account of me. Trust me, Robert. Okay. Well, the good news, uh, we don't owe 130 at this point. But in the last year, uh, there's been $65,000 paid towards that bill. So we praise the Lord for that. Um, yes. We praise, yeah. Yeah. There's hope. Okay. Uh, so that's just the first one. <clears throat> okay. I do this every time here, don't I? Um, yeah. I can, I, yeah. Okay. Hopefully you're encouraged already. Let me pick up the pace here. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, can we trust God? A question for you. Can we Trust God. Remember, Jesus says, blessed is a man who does not fall away on account of me. How many people do we know that are Christians and they finally throw up their hands and say, I'm sick of it. I'm sick. I'm out of here. Shaking their fist at God. And they're, they don't go to church anymore, etc., etc. Can we trust God? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. So you hear that? Trust in the Lord with all. Blessed is a man who does not fall away on account of me. Oh, Lord. Near-death experience, sick as a dog, $135,000. Do not lean on your own. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In other words, some of the things that will be allowed to happen to you, that God will allow to happen to you, will be beyond your logic and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mind blown. Just like, uh, Lord, I've been a missionary now 38, seven years, whatever it is, long, four decades. It's like, ow, Lord, 
why not protect me from this? Things will happen to you beyond your logic and wisdom to deal with. Okay. Uh, the Lord is going to allow circumstances where he's going to ask you this, to simply trust him. To simply trust him. Even though he does not give you answers on this side of eternity. It's way cool to ask, Lord, why? Lord, why? Lord, why? Lord, I'm begging, why, 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 why? That's cool. He answers that at times, and there's other times when the Lord says, Rob, take my hand and trust me. Take my hand and trust me. Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Lord, I'm hurting. I know. Come to me. Ask for help. <clears throat> Three, the goodness of God. If we don't believe God is good, then we won't trust him. Is God good? Bang, the Lord allowed this hell in my life. Is God good? Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Fascinating. I shall not be in want means, what does it mean? It means this, to have a legitimate and confident contentment with God and his plan for your life. It's so legitimate and confident. So nothing that you self lied to yourself. Uh, it's something that you've looked at and go, I still choose to trust the Lord. Lord, help me to trust you. I am weak. That's another beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's what that means. Lord, I don't have that ability. Lord, give me that ability. A shortened up means this, that 23 one. Uh, I am happy with how the shepherd is treating me. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <sighs> yeah. Um, Spurgeon says this, I might want otherwise, but when the Lord is my shepherd and he is able to supply my needs, he is certainly willing to do so, for his heart is full of love, and therefore I shall not want. God is good at trusting. For we, have, we get help from God. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Uh, the, our, uh, scripture says this, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. To summarize that up quickly, what, what that verse is saying is this, uh, this is God's provision for our every need when we need it. When we need it. We don't have provision right now for everything the rest of our life. Uh, we have provision. God provides the help we need. That's a better way of saying it. Uh, for what we need at this moment, at that moment, at all the rest of our life. The more we are in need, the more God ramps up. Thank you, Lord. Five. So there's six. Five. This will be quick. So God's purpose. So why? We ask the question, Lord, why? If you expect us to not fall away on account of you and you're allowing this misery in our life, what's, the, what's at least one purpose? James 1, 2 through 4 states this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you be, may, may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Three quick little sub-points here. So number one purpose is this. God is growing us. Mm -hmm. Ouch. I have sent this to the Lord in prayer uh, years ago. I said, Lord, if, if this means growing up, I'm okay to be immature in this area. <laughs> but I'll trust you, Lord. I'll, I'll trust you. Okay. Yes. So, number one, he's growing us. Number two is this, and this will be an encouragement to you. This will be an encouragement. So, please hear these words. God never wastes the pain. God, you can write that down. If that's the only thing you take away, that's cool. God never, ever wastes the pain. You can bank on that. You can bet your 401k on that. Number three, and this is great too, this is actually another Vance Havner quote, I didn't know this. God is far more interested in you being holy than you being happy. I'm not happy, I'm not happy, I'm not happy. Well, God is concerned about that, but he's far more interested in you being holy. 
Yes. Um, interesting, when I was laying in the hospital bed um, for all those days, and uh, uh, pretty soon I got a, you know, various, uh, I got bunk mate, hospital bed mate, two, two beds to a room. So pretty soon there was a young man, probably 30 years old, that showed up. Now he was my, my bunk mate there in my hospital room. As he came in, it was like, and I was sick, getting sick as a dog. But the Holy Spirit was like, Rob, nothing audible, but just a, a prompt. Rob, this guy needs to hear the gospel. He's ripe for the harvest. Okay, Lord, you gotta help me. You gotta help me. Hard to put cognitive thought together. And so, guess what I got to do? I shared with him the gospel. He got saved. Wow. He got saved. And uh, a day or two later, he was getting out. And, and Cindy was visiting at the time. And I told the young man, I said, hey, this is my wife, Cindy. Would you like to tell him? Uh, well, tell her. Yeah, she's a female. If, uh, uh, would you like to tell my wife what you did? And he explained in detail uh, what he did. It was just like, okay. Now, I, we know, uh, we've known this pastor for a long time. We grew up with this pastor, uh, Dan Nickerson, Pastor Dan Nickerson. He pastored down in Rathdrum, Idaho. And so he has a sense of humor. He, he, I shared with him that story of leading this guy to Jesus. So um, uh, he said this. He says, Rob, I need to tell you this. Uh, Rob, that wasn't somebody else in that room. That was you standing in front of your mirror. So uh, um, anyway, I thought that was cute. That I was actually trying to lead, you know, hey, who's the old guy in the mirror? You need Jesus. <laughs> so <laughs> that didn't happen. It was legit. Six and lastly, okay. Uh, God gives us hope. Do you need hope? Oh, man. God gives us hope, and I'm closing with this. Hebrews 12, 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and protector of our faith. What are we doing? Eyes on Jesus. Trust in the Lord. Another way, just trust in the Lord with all your heart. Uh, keep your, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and protector of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Oh, trial, God allowed that to Jesus. Jesus went through hell. He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand. Oh, sat, oh, where is he at? Oh, Jesus bumps. I'm sweating and getting Jesus bumps. And, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary. Oh, I've grown weary. And lose heart. Yeah. Ever lost heart? In conclusion, focus on Jesus. We're getting one day at a time. We're getting closer to Jesus. Yes. And guess what? You're on your way to heaven. You're on your... It's just a matter of time. Oh, there it goes again. Jesus bump. You're on your way. Let that wash. You're... This is not your home. You're on your way. Just another day. Let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. Lord. We praise you. Oh, Heavenly Father, would you please burn these truths deep into each one of us, the, your dear people here, Lord, these sweet, sweet people. Would you do that, please, Lord? And Heavenly Father, I ask you this question, Lord. And as I ask um, the, the congregation here, uh, Heavenly Father, if there's somebody here that has not yet trusted your son, Jesus, as their Savior, and would like to today, that Lord, in the quietness of their heart, that they'll pray this prayer to you, Lord. And Lord, we know it's not the prayer that saves us. Prayer is simply communication to you. It's you that does the saving. But Lord, we know also that if we ask, you give. If you ask, we give. So, Lord, if there's somebody or somebody's here that has not yet trusted Jesus as their Savior and would like to right now, to, in the quietness of their heart, pray this prayer. Jesus, I am a sinner. Jesus, you are the Savior. Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me, Lord. 
Jesus, you died for me, you were buried, and you rose again three days later. We praise you for that, Lord. So, Lord, give me eternal life. Save me, Jesus. We pray for all this now, Lord, in your son's sweet name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for letting me go a little long. Um, Sir John. <laughs>